My name is Anthony Parsons. I'm 21 years old and I'm a certified flight instructor for Del Sol Aviation in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, and today I'd like to uh, walk with you through a ritual uh, us flight instructors do and students uh, to perform a safety check or what's called a pre-flight every time we fly just to make sure the aircraft is safe and in operating condition. This, this is a checklist. This checklist uh, organizes each item in a chronological format and order of importance. Uh, we teach our students here to go over each item in a certain order to make sure the flight is safe and ready to go. So if you'll follow me, we'll go ahead and start our pre-fly on this aircraft right behind me. Okay, so the very first item we're going to perform on this checklist is the maintenance status. On the dispatch form, there'll be a list of inoperative equipments uh, one we can point out right here is the NOP EGT gauge, or the exhaust gas temperature. Uh, it has an inoperative sticker on it, therefore it is not working. Not necessarily a major problem for today's flight, however, uh, was noted. Uh, the next item on the checklist says Hobbs and tack time. The Hobbs time is how much time is on the airframe itself. The tack time is how much time is on the engine. So the Hobbs time is recorded right here. At uh, 47.49.5, we'll go ahead and jot that down in our notepad. And then the tack time is 16.10.4. We're just going to go ahead and note that for a future reference. The next item is the required documents. So the required documents are four main items. You need an airway certificate, a registration, an operating handbook, and a weight and balance. Those main items are in the back of the aircraft. Your weight and balance data and POH, or Pilot's Operating Handbook, is all in this jumble of papers in the plastic bag right here. If you'll look towards the rear of the aircraft on the inside, we can see the airway certificate as well as the registration are located in the back and in view to passengers and crew to make this flight legal as possible. The next document on here is the control wheel lock. If you'll look here, we can see that our controls are restricted by a little lock. We're gonna go ahead and remove this little lock. Now you can see I have full deflection of the controls, full back, full left, full right. Perfect. The next item on here is the parking brake. We're gonna go ahead and make sure the parking brake is in the off position, which it currently is. Full in like that and off to the side is off. Uh, next is the ignition switch. These aircraft run on something called magnetos, so if that propeller was turned ever so slightly with the ignition to the on position, that propeller could technically start back up by itself. So I want to make sure the ignition switch right here is in the off position, which it currently is. Uh, oh, over here we have the master switch. I'm going to go ahead and flip this on. What this is doing is it's turning our battery on. Now our battery is active. We're going to go ahead and do a number of things and check all of our lights as well as our fuel gauges and everything else. If you'll take note real quick right here, we can just check our fuel gauges and indicate that uh, our right tank is full and our left tank is half. So we'll have to get fuel before we leave. Next we'll go ahead and lower the flaps to their lowest position all the way down. If you look outside real quick, you can notice the flaps lowering to their fullest position. And next, we're gonna go ahead and run outside and go check some lights. Okay, so now all of our lights are on. Take a walk with me and let's go check some lights. Over here on our wingtip, you can see our landing light is currently on. Watch your eyes, but we do have a strobe light operating on the side here. That strobe light is crucial to today's flight. Also, we have our nav lights if we're flying at night. We wanna make sure those are working as well too. Walk with me to the back. That flashing red light on top is called the beacon. The beacon it needs to be on for all portions of the flight because it's a required light to have. Come with me to the back. This light up on top is our rear nav light. We're making sure it is operative as well. We'll go to the other side. Just watch your step. On this side, we have our opposite strobe. We have our opposite navigation light, as well as our last landing light, which is the wingtip light. You can see that working right there. Last but not least, we have our last landing light right here, 
excuse me, actually a taxi light is located right here. Alrighty, so the next item on the empennage checklist is the baggage door. These baggage doors are always notorious for opening and flight. So we want to make sure we're going to give it a little tug, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, next on the checklist is our antennas. We're checking our communications of our one antenna, as well as our communications of our two antenna are in position, which they are. Right here is our ELT antenna, or our emergency locator transmitter. We want to make sure it's um, in position and not going to move anywhere. Over here is a old ELT, which is not, no longer in use. However, I'm just going to give it a little shake, make sure it's not going anywhere. Back on the tail over here on the top are our VOR, localizer, and glide slope antennas. We can just call those navigation antennas for short. They're both, in, both there, one on each side, making sure they're not going to fall off on us. Okay, so the next portion on the empennage checklist is the elevator. This right here is called an elevator, and what it does is it changes our pitch attitude. So instead of just moving up and down to the sky, this is going to give us a nice control, uh, either ascent or descent. On the elevator, we're checking for a couple of things. If you'll come out over here, we're checking for the hinges. The hinges are nice and secure. There's one right here, as well as one right here. This over here is called a counterweight. It's a lead counterweight to be exact, and we're checking for full deflection upwards, full deflection downwards. Right here is the control rods. We're checking the control rods, making sure they're undamaged and not broken, which they look pretty good. Next on a checklist is something called a rudder. The rudder is gonna control our yaw axes. Uh, we wanna go ahead and put one hand uh, firmly on this side and one hand firmly on this side, and we're gonna deflect each direction, making sure that we're not putting one point of pressure in any one spot, moving the rudder in both directions, checking for a full deflection. On top, you'll notice a small counterweight made out of lead, just like the rest. And on bottom here, you'll notice a couple of control uh, cables, making sure those are nice and secure and not broken. Next is our trim tab. You can think of the elevator as a saw blade. You can think of the trim tab as your sandpaper. If we want to make small, fine adjustments, we can use the trim tab in order to correct those small adjustments. So this is called an anti-servo trim tab. When I move the control circuit upwards, the trim tab should deflect in the opposite direction, in this case downwards. And vice versa, we're checking for proper deflection both sides. Moving along is the right wing. This right here is our right wing. First and foremost is the flap. The purpose of the flap is to control our rate of descent without increasing airspeed. It should have a tiny bit of play, which it does. If you'll follow me to the other side of the flap, we're checking for a couple of things. We're checking for the rails. The rails have adequate amount of lube, as well as they're not bent. There's two, one on each side. Right here is the control linkage. We're checking the control linkage for adequate uh, play, and the keeper nut is not gonna fall off. Over here is our aileron. Our aileron controls our bank, left and right. We're gonna go ahead and move the control surface full up and full down. We're checking for a couple of things, if you'll follow me right over here. We're checking for the control linkage, making sure the keeper nut is not gonna fall off on us. We're checking for not one, not two, but three lead counterweights are all in position. And the control surface has full deflection up, full deflection down. Perfect. So next is our wing tips and lights. I have literally had these lights fall off my hand before. So I always make sure I'm gonna give them a little bit of a shake and a movement just so they don't go ahead and fall off in flight. I'll next take both hands and move the wing gently up and down in order to make sure nothing major is gonna fall off on us, which could be crucial to our flight. If you'll follow me right on over here, our next item is the main gear. This right here is the main gear. We're checking for a couple of things with the main gear. We're checking for adequate tire uh, tread wear. We don't want any low spots. If the cord line is showing, excuse me, uh, that's no bueno. Over here, we have what's called a cotter pin. This cotter pin needs to be in position at all times, as well as our valve stem needs to be aligned with this red dot. If those two are not aligned, that means the tire has now rotated and that tire is now unsafe. So always be sure that these are aligned. 
Over here on this side, we have the brake caliper as well as the brake rotor and the brake line. We're checking for no uneven scoring or sharp edges on our brake rotor as well as adequate brake pad life on our brake calipers or excuse me brake pads and last but not least we have our brake line we want to make sure there's no leaks not dripping any brake fluid. the next item on the checklist is something called a tank drain this right here is a fuel strainer what i'm going to do with it is i'm going to invert the probe and i'm going to insert it into what's called our fuel strainer I will go ahead and insert it and strain a sample of our fuel. What this is called is a 100 low lead avgas. So it's 100 octane and it has uh, low amounts of lead in it. What I usually like to do is hold it against a white background like the paint or something and take a flashlight to it. I'm looking for any sediment, any foreign objects or debris or any water inside the fuel. If water does happen to be in our fuel, water is heavier than avgas so it'll sink to the bottom and it'll be a clear uh, notation that you have water in your fuel. It's almost like mixing oil and water together. So this is nice and clear fuel, looks good to me. Next is our overhead cabinet inlets. Our overhead cabinet inlets are right here. What you can think of these as is basically your air conditioning inlets. Airplanes don't have air conditioning, well these small ones don't anyway. Uh, so right here is the inlet to the rear seat, right here is the inlet to the front seat. We're checking for any possible wasp nests or any foreign objects or debris that could have been uh, clogged in there. Remember, it's a direct airflow to the cabin, so if there is a wasp nest in there, we're gonna get a inject load of wasps into our cabin. Not a fun day. Uh, after that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our nose checklist. On the nose checklist, we're checking our engine oil. So I have popped the uh, cowling hatch, and I'm gonna reach my hand in here and grab something called the oil dipstick. I'm going to remove the oil dipstick and I'm checking the engine oil level. If you'll go ahead and examine the oil, we need a minimum of six quarts and a maximum of eight. This airplane has six, so looks like we'll have to add a quart of oil today. We're going to go ahead and check our exhaust stack. Going down here, we have what's called our exhaust pipe. I'll take something hard like a pen. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little uh, tap on it, and it has a nice ring to it. If I go ahead and place my foot on it and give it a tap again and it has a dull sound to it, that means there's a crack, a crack in our exhaust manifold which can lead to carbon monoxide poisoning which can kill everyone. So I want to make sure it has that nice little ring to it. So the next portion is our tire. The tire is a what's called the nose wheel tire. I like to take my fret and put a little bit of pressure on the tire and make sure it has adequate pressure. I'm also checking for the tread wear, making sure the tread wear has adequate life as well as no bald spots. The next item on here is called the alternator belt. The alternator belt is up here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Right here is the alternator belt. Let me go ahead and shine my flashlight on that so you can see it nice and clear. It is right here. We're checking for adequate tension. We want the tension to be somewhat moderate, not too crazy tight, but not super loose either. That right there is perfect tension. Our next item on the checklist is something called the propeller and the spinner. The propeller is right here. It's maximum 74 inches, minimum 72. I'm running my hands along it, make sure I'm not feeling any uh, large cracks, nicks, or dents. The spinner is right here. I'm also doing the same exact thing, checking for any uh, cracks, any dents, anything that can make this uh, whole spinning, rotating system off balance, which can rattle our poor engine to death. And on that, we have our landing light. Our landing light is right here. We're gonna go ahead and give it a little wiggle to make sure she's not going anywhere. She is all secure. Uh, our carburetor air filter is located right here. We need to make sure that this is obstru not obstructed. I have literally hit birds and plastic bags, bags before, which can cause your engine to choke out because of the lack of airflow. So making sure that this is unclogged and clear is a really important task. Uh, next is something called the cowling. This whole unit right here is called the cowling. It surrounds the engine and uh, gives it a nice protective coat. We're gonna check every single screw on here to make sure that they are all secure and fully fastened. If one screw is unloose or a multiple amount of screws are unloose, it, the wind could come up on here and rip this whole cowling off in flight, which could be really uh, bad to our flight. 
Okay, uh, last but not least, we have our windshield or windscreen. I'm a pretty picky pilot. I enjoy a nice clean windscreen as I'm sure most of you do. So we're gonna make sure that this windscreen is nice and clear. Right here is called our static port. Right here, this little tiny hole uh, allows ambient air pressure to flow inside our cockpit and power all of our instruments. If this hole is somehow clogged, maybe maintenance took some wax and put the wax on the airplane or a bug flew in the hole, uh, that can clog the airflow and allow uh, a substantial amount of error to be put to our instruments which can give us uh, improper indications on our instruments. Let me show that's nice and clear. If you'll follow me to the left wing checklist, here is our left wing. Our very first thing on here is our uh, pitot tube. We're going to go ahead and remove our pitot tube cover. This right here is a pitot tube. It measures ram air pressure which comes in on this tiny little hole in front and it allows our airspeed to be given to us inside the cockpit. We're checking to make sure this hole is unclogged and undamaged as well as the whole unit itself is secure and not gonna fall off. Okay, so now we are on top of the aircraft. We are standing on the designated portions to check our fuel tanks. Right here, we have 21 and a half gallon fuel tanks which hold our av gas. The way I like to check our fuel is to take one finger and plop it in like so. My finger is now wet with av gas. If you get av gas on your hands, it will turn your hands kind of ashy and chalky. That way you know it's av gas and it'll also have a little bit of a smell, kind of a gasoline type smell. If the fuel is kind of uh, oily, it's probably jet fuel. Jet fuel is basically kerosene and will have a very oily texture. So if we have jet fuel on our aircraft, it will uh, not run because it's jet fuel. We're gonna go ahead and place this cap back down and finish the rest of our checklist. Back here on the ground, uh, we are going to go ahead and finish the rest of the checklist. The next item on here is our stall horn. Our stall horn was, is what's called a pneumatic stall horn. We're checking for a couple of things. It should be clear and unclogged and uh, unobstructed. If negative airflow pressure flows back inside the stall horn, it's going to give you a loud kind of high-pitched whine. You can demonstrate this by sucking your lips on the stall horn. It should give you some sort of a little bit of a whine. Let's go ahead and find out. <laughs> like so. Alrighty, the next thing on the checklist is our fuel vent. If you'll come right over here, we have what's called a fuel vent, which is just a basically a small tube which allows airflow pressure to flow back inside our fuel tanks. The reason we have this is to allow air pressure back inside our fuel tanks. If you've ever held a large jug of water upside down, it kind of goes glug, glug, glug. Well, with that, that creates a vacuum. With this fuel vent, that allows air pressure flow to flow back inside, therefore not creating a vacuum, which can lead to fuel starvation if we didn't have that. So we have it and it's all perfect. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do almost a repeat. However, this is the left wing instead of the right wing. We're gonna go ahead and give our wing tip a small shake, as well as each wing tip like the strobe and the navigation light. Over here, we have our aileron, same thing on this side. Full deflection upwards, full deflection downwards. We're checking for uno, dos, and trace on our uh, counterweights. We have our control rod in position, small amounts of movement. The keeper nut is not gonna back out at us. And finally, our flap. Small amounts of play. The rails are nice and secure, adequately lubed, unbent, and we have our keeper nut on the control rod, nice and secure. Looks pretty good. This airplane is airworthy and ready for flight. Let's go in the cockpit and take off.